Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about shotguns uh, as SHTF anti-drone guns. Okay, so uh, drone warfare is here. Uh, and I'm not even talking about like the government drones that fly at like 10,000 feet. Uh, I'm talking about, uh, you know, the $300 drones that you buy on Amazon uh, that I, you know, we can see are actually being used for warfare um, in Ukraine and the Middle East. Okay. So the, these drones are primarily being used uh, for observation, right? So they can observe the position and figure out how to best attack it. Uh, but they're also being rigged with explosives so they can actually attack people, okay? So, so the drones are, 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 in addition to observation, they're also anti-personnel. You know, they're, they're being used to actually attack people. Now, the videos I've seen, it's questionable as how, how effective they are being uh, rigged with bombs because, uh, you know, you got to carry the bomb, you got to arm the bomb, and then you got to drop it on the target. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know, you know, but definitely for observation, uh, there, it, it's absolutely a thing, okay? So, it's something that we have to kind of uh, factor in. So, uh, we're going to, so, so that's why we're keeping it on the list of S SHTF guns. The last time I updated this list, I was, actually, I was considering taking the, the, uh, the shotgun off of the list. Uh, and the reason for that was like it, the reason, the main reason why the shotgun was on the list was for hunting, right? For hunting small, fast moving animals like, you know, rodents, birds. Um, that was the primary reason why it was on the list. But now with drone warfare being a thing, right? And there's enough drones that have been already sold uh, that in an SHTF type of situation that you know, they're going to be out there. They're going to be there. People are going to use them. They're going to use whatever tools are available to them. And there's enough drones out there that they're going to be used at the very least for observation. Okay. So, uh, because the drone is a small thing that's moving around, right? Uh, yeah, the shotgun, uh, particularly shooting buckshot, uh, is, is probably the best way, uh, to stop it. Okay. Um, now you don't have to completely destroy it. Uh, drones are pretty fragile. They usually have like multiple propellers, like four propellers. And if, if you just damage one of the propellers a little bit, uh, it's going to become it's going to destabilize. It's not going to be able to fly as well. It may fall out of the sky. Uh, so we, we just need to damage it enough so that it can't continue to do what it's doing. Okay, so so that's an important thing to know. It's not like you're shooting clay discs out of the air where you basically turn the clay discs into dust. You, you just need to damage it, particularly the propellers, right? Uh, and and uh, it's it's not going to be able to keep doing what it's doing, okay? Uh, primarily, uh, you know, doing observation. So, uh, we're going to we're gonna focus on the shotguns first, right? Uh, we're going to talk about different choices, uh, pros and cons, uh, and then we're going to, I'm going to kind of do a recap of the other SHTF guns, but let's, let's stick to the shotgun. So, um, Number one shotgun that you guys should have for anti-drone uh, defense is some kind of an AK shotgun. Okay, so this is a Lynx 12. I've done many videos on this. You can't, uh, I don't know if they're still selling these. I don't think they're still selling them. I mean, if, if there's any that they have in stock, I'm sure they'll sell them. But uh, I don't know if they're still being imported. They may have been discontinued. Uh, but I think that other companies are making these. I think JTS is making them that that is probably the um, the comp like if I didn't have a number of AK shotguns that's probably what I would go look at the JTS ones um, but yeah a you want a semi-automatic magazine fed shotgun that you can mount an optic on it uh, collapsible stock okay um, you know reliable okay so here's the thing I've got two of these right here okay so each of these has 15,000 plus rounds on it. Okay, each one of them. 15 on this one, 15 on this one. Um, and prior to this, okay, I had uh, two Sega 12s. Okay, and we're going back like 10, like 12 years at this point. Um, I had two Sega 12s, and each of those did 30,000, about 30,000 rounds each uh, before the 
bolt carriers broke, right? There was the bolt carrier started separating uh, at the point where the piston attaches the carrier. Um, so if I got like 30K rounds out of each of those, I used those for, for many years. And as soon as those broke, um, I was like frantically shopping around for a replacement. I, they weren't importing uh, Sega 12s anymore. Uh, I tried the Cheetah 12, which came from SDS, uh, the same company that made the Lynx 12. The, the Cheetah 12 was garbage. Okay, it was I was having lots of reliability problems when I would shoot it. The dust cover would fly off. Um, so the, the Cheetah 12 was was garbage. But they took uh, some of the lessons that they learned off of the, of the Cheetah 12, and they built the Lynx 12, uh, which is a very reliable gun. Okay, and it, and the nice thing is that. It takes uh, the um, uh, the Sega 12 magazines. So since I already had like, you know, many many of these Sega 12 magazines, um, that was a, a a good reason for me to like, you know, like why I, I wanted to go with that. Okay. Now I have looked at other uh, semi-automatic shotguns. I've looked at uh, like I've actually uh, uh, have met up with people and tried a like. I don't want to call them AR shotguns because they're really not ARs. They don't work the same way. The parts aren't the same. But they have the shape of an AR-15, okay? And um, I don't even remember what company it was. But what I what my initial impressions on these AR shotguns is that the, the system was pretty complicated and it might have reliability issues, okay? So that was my initial impressions on the AR. The AK shotguns... They pretty much follow the AK pattern, okay? So, I mean, obviously, the you, know, you, I mean, you got a barrel, you've got a, a piston over here, the bolt, very similar, the trigger system, very, you know, triggers very system, safety. It's basically, this follows the AK-47 pattern as closely as possible, which is part of the reason why this is very, very reliable, okay? It's, it, you know, it, it, got, it has the... Um, um, the uh the side mount here for your optics so so it, it follows the ak pattern very closely and that's why it's you know i got 15k on this one 15k on the other one uh very very reliable so uh if at all possible get yourself an ak uh shotgun um magazine fed that will take an optic on top uh get one that will follow the ak pattern as, as closely as possible now, I want to add uh, two quick things on the uh, on shotgun and an AK shotgun. Uh, number one, you, may, you when you buy it, make sure it has uh, an adjustable gas valve. Uh, this one has, the Lynx 12 has four positions uh, because shotgun shells, you know, from birdshot to buckshot to slugs, you know, two and three quarter inches, three inches, um, they've got really different pressures, right? The, uh, so you want to be able to kind of like fine tune it. Um, now, usually, like if you have it set to birdshot, okay, which is where I have this one set, right, with the, with the biggest hole, uh, it will also shoot everything else, uh, but it will recoil a lot harder. Okay, so especially if you're like shooting a drone in the air that's like up there like this, okay, um, and if you know you're going to be shooting, let's say buckshot, uh, if you can adjust the gas valve to you know so that it has so it recalls a little bit less uh you'll more easily be able to shoot these unconventional positions okay so uh that's one of the big benefits of having a, a gas regulator now if you're and also what happens is the recall spring right this recall spring acts as a shock absorber okay so uh with a pump basically there's no shock absorber uh so especially if you're shooting unconventional position like this all that you know especially if you're shooting like three inch sales man that 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 you know you're gonna get kicked pretty hard in a way that you're not used to getting kicked if you're up here like this okay so having an adjustable gas valve is a big advantage uh on a shotgun okay and having a recoil spring that that absorbs some of that recoil is also an advantage now uh what you want to do is make sure that you remove your, your your gas valve and clean it every so often because otherwise it will seize up and you won't be able to remove it. Um, 
you know, I've done it. I, basically, this one's impossible to get off. I mean, I, if I if I put a vice grip on it and I turn it, I may get it off, or I may crack it. So I'm not. I'm, I'm leaving it alone. I'm not doing anything with it. Uh, but yeah, if you with the adjustable gas valve, uh, make sure that you are removing it and cleaning it so it doesn't uh, seize up on you. Okay. Um, so yeah, I wanted to add those things with the, uh, uh, you know, with the, with with an AK style shotgun. The Make sure it's got an adjustable gas valve that has at least four positions. The Sega 12 only had two, so this is this is an improvement. And having that a recoil spring uh, is going to pick up a lot of that uh, that recoil, you know, especially if you're shooting the three-inch shells, which will, will give you a lot more distance. Okay, uh, so yeah, and you de de try to get an, a shotgun that will take uh, three-inch shells in addition to the two. Uh, and three quarter inches. Okay, now, let's uh, let's talk about some other possibilities. Okay? So let's let's talk about pumps. Okay, uh, what about pumps? Okay, so uh, how many rounds do I have on this one? I would probably say two to five thousand on this one. I mean, this one only has a few hundred on it. I've got other pumps. Um, so with the with the pumps, I have found that with relatively low counts right considering i got like 15k here 15k here you know 30 on my sega on one sega 30 on another sega with with it with relatively low round counts sub 5,000 rounds um i generally have some kind of a problem with the tube magazine okay so with with the, with the, so we're talking about reliability here so um, what the way these things load is you you throw the you, you, you feed the shells in um, into the magazine through this ejection port here and uh, you know there's a spring in there and when the when the shells go in there's this basically like a um, you know basically it, it, it locks behind it and when you pump it it opens up so what I have found right is that the I, I generally have so you know with high round counts the magazine tube uh, has some kind of a problem. Okay, this has happened to me more than once on, you know, it's happened to me several times on several different shotguns. Now, in general, in general, the magazine is one of the most vulnerable parts of a gun. Okay, so with these, here's the thing, with these, uh, you know, AK style magazines, I mean, yeah, I've broken magazines. I've, you know, I've had, I've had issues with them, but with this, you throw it out and pull out another one okay because these are detachable so this is one of the most vulnerable areas of any gun including like your ar-15s and your glocks this is vulnerable it breaks you just get another one okay the with the when you have a tube magazine okay when something inside it breaks it's not so easy to replace and fix and etc because this is part of the gun okay so that's the first problem that I ran with, into with uh, pump guns as far as reliability when you're doing high round counts. And we're talking like, you know, 5,000 plus rounds, okay? Because a lot of times, you know, when people, as far as shotguns, people tend to not shoot them as much as other guns. So a lot of times people think that they got a couple of hundred rounds on the shotgun. It's like, oh yeah, I got a high round count. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you know, I shoot and it's not just me shooting i train when i train people the guns run thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds and with all the guns the magazines are one of the first things that break uh and with when the magazines are detachable okay uh it's easy to correct the problem by changing the magazine okay? when the magazine is integral to the gun it's not so easy to change the magazine okay so so that's the main reliability issue I have had with pumps, numerous pumps from different companies. Um, and you, you see this one's got like all sorts of wear on it, okay? So uh, as far as using this, okay, uh, what I find is in stressful situations, people tend to short stroke it, people tend to drop shells. So with, with the magazine, right, so you got all your shells, there's a 10 round magazine, you know, you load them all at once into the gun, okay? Uh, instead of feeding it one by one. So, uh, I mean, you can always, like, you can, you know, a lot of times you can fumble loading the magazine, especially on an AK-style gun, right, because you have to kind of hook it, right, and, and basically rock it in. But 
you know, you can, that, if you fumble it, that's like you're going to fumble it once, okay? Or, or at the point that you're trying to insert it. Um, with the, when, we're trying to feed shotgun shells one by one uh, into the, you know, you know, through the, through the, uh, uh, the ejection port down here. You know, every time you try to load one, there's another opportunity for you to fumble it, okay? Uh, so even with people that have lots of experience with, with pumps, when I put them in a stressful situation, they, they, they drop shells, okay? Um, and the other thing that they'll do is they will short stroke it. They won't, sh they won't uh, pump it hard enough to completely eject the, uh, you know, the shell. Now, uh, the other thing to understand with um, specific to anti-drone defense you're not going to be like you know sitting here you know like you're shooting plate discs okay you're probably going to be on your back you know behind the rock or something in a very awkward unconventional position okay so um trying to pump the shotgun when you're on your back right you know or in a hole or in a very weird position is a lot more difficult than trying to pump it when you are standing okay versus semi-automatic, okay? You know, with this thing, I mean, you know, you could turn this to the side and he's like, bang, bang, you know, because these do have big magazines and a lot of times if you, tr you know, th these magazines can hit stuff, right? And, and But you can easily turn this to the side, get in your shoulder with the red dot, right? You don't have to have your face on the gun. This will work in an awkward position like this. And then with that, this is this has a 65 MOA circle. You know, with this, even if, you, if you're in an awkward position, you know, it's some weird position like this. You can shoot this gun, and you don't have to think about how you're gonna pump it when the thing's like up in the air like this, right? Because the drone's up in the sky like this, right? So with this, it's boom, 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 and you're tracking it, you know, because you you can continually track it, right, um, as it's moving overhead. With the with the, with the um, with this, it's like you got boom, boom, you know. So. <laughs> This this can be a very weird situation, uh, and again, very easy to short stroke the gun and cause some type of a jam. So that's one of the things that you gotta uh, think about with using a shotgun, uh, you know, for anti drone defense. You, you know, you're not gonna be shooting this like you're shooting clay discs. You know, uh, you might be hiding, you might be shooting straight up, you might be on your back, you know, you might be like in in, in the back of a pickup truck, you know, laying down. You know, you, you know, you might be like trying to shoot it like from underneath the truck pointing up so that pumping action right which is a, a large motion right um there's, there's in my opinion there's a lot of chance for error now other thing with a lot of these shotguns is a lot of times they they're not, they you know you can't mount the red dot on it and you absolutely have an advantage okay with a red dot and I, i've trained new shooters all the time um i can give this you know I, I train women shooting for the first time and they hit the clay discs like right away with this compared to this okay they have a much easier time hitting clay discs with this versus this okay so red dot has a lot to do with that not having to pump it every time you shoot has a lot to do with it uh with a lot of shotguns like this all you have is a front bead so there's no rear sight on this right so all you have is that front bead so that depends on your face being on the stock uh, in order for you to use the front bead. If your face is off the stock, that front bead means absolutely nothing. Okay, you're not aiming. Your face has to be on the stock, okay, in order for that, in order for you to be able to use the front bead. So um, you're not going to be able to shoot unconventional positions, you know, uh, you know, on the back, on your back, or up, up in the air. That can be a little weird, right? Um, you, you know that you're not going to be able to do it as easy. Now, some shotguns like this one over here has two beads, all right? So they actually put two beads on this, so it's a little bit easier, all right? But then we still have the issue of having to pump it and trying to shoot. Remember, we're not shooting like this anymore. We're shooting like that, trying to track this, this, you know, you know, like that, you know, trying to track this drone that's flying overhead. Okay, so this is for a combat situation. Where you have a drone that's like buzz, or maybe multiple drones. Okay? Um, other sh type of shotguns, uh, double barrel. Okay, so this is uh, to a lot of people. This might be nostalgic of uh, Mad Max. Okay, so first of all, when you got a double barrel shotgun, this heavy, right? Because most of a lot of the weight is in the barrel. 
So you got two barrels here, uh, which makes the gun heavier. Okay. Uh, other thing uh, now with this one over here, uh, uh, I did. Uh, I mean, I I got probably several hundred rounds on this one. It didn't take long before the triggers started going a little wacky on me. So what would happen is because you got two triggers here, one for the, for the right one, one for the left one. Uh, but at some point, the sears started wearing out, and when I would pull one trigger, the vibration would also set off the 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 second trigger. So I would pull one trigger and both barrels would fire at the same time. So it was kind of cool, but not if you need a second shot. Okay. So, so yeah, just keep that in mind. These things tend to be heavier. Okay. So this is, um, like right now, this isn't loaded. This one feels heavier. Now, obviously, if I load this up, it's probably, it's going to get a little bit, it's probably going to be heavier than this one. But here I only got two rounds, whereas that one I can have 10 plus one, I can have 11 rounds. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, shotguns definitely back on the SHTF uh, gun list for anti-drone anti defense. That's something that we got to think about. It, it's a thing. We're seeing it. Uh, there, you know, enough of them have been sold so that, you know, it's, it's like anybody that would try, that would want to take the stuff that you have, right, or attack you in your home might try to fly a drone in you know, an SHTF type situation. Uh, might try to fly a drone over to, you know, observe and, and, and try to do as much information gathering as possible. Uh, and we want a, a way to, you know, to stop that from happening, right? To stop other people from seeing, you know, what defensive, uh, uh, you know, what, you know, what, what defense pot preparations we have made. Okay. So let's just do a quick um, uh, uh, recap of my SHTF guns list. Okay. So your number one is your AR-15 shooting 5.56. Okay. That's your, that's your number one gun. Okay. Um, uh, as far as 5.56, nice thing about 556 five, is like a thousand rounds you know weighs something like 22 pounds okay so i think with bird shot i mean for the same weight i get only 200 rounds okay uh and with buckshot i might be it might be a hundred rounds okay so 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 when we're looking at weight with 556 five, we're getting uh, we're getting a lot more ammunition for the same weight so so the way i see it um, since the, the 5.56 five, is lighter, I got more of it. The shotgun is definitely not something I would want to use for a self-defense type of situation against another person. I would want to conserve that ammunition specifically for drone defense, okay? So 5.56, five, you know, is definitely your primary, uh, you know, your primary, your, your number two gun, number two SHTF gun is your Glock, uh, either 17 or 19. In nine millimeter, okay, it's gotta be nine millimeter because that is the most common, okay. So again, we're looking at we want to, you know, number one gun and number two gun. We want to use the most common calibers, so five five six and nine millimeter, you know, Glock something, okay. Um, the three criteria for picking a gun is number one reliability, you know, uh, proven in a battlefield military conditions, so reliability. Number two, access to parts. Okay, so the patents on ARs and Glocks have, expi have expired, so the, you have access right now to lots of aftermarket parts, okay, and people have been stockpiling a lot of these Glock and AR-15 parts, okay, so uh, number two is access to parts, and number three, access to fix the guns, or knowledge rather, knowledge to fix the guns when they break, okay, so uh, there's lots of people out there that know how to fix AR-15s and Glocks, okay, um, um, so, so even if you don't know how to fix these guns yourself, you can find somebody else that can that can fix it for you or teach you how to fix it. Okay, so that's why AR-15, 556 is your number one. Glock in nine millimeter is your number two. Uh, number three, I have the uh, a nine millimeter AR. Okay, so this replaced the uh, uh, the AK-47. And I'm, and I'm not saying if you got an AK-47 thrown in the garbage. Okay, you know. The reason why the 9mm AR replaced the AK-47 is the reliability of ARs was questionable and we didn't know it at the time but the, the, the weakest link of an AR-15 was its magazine, those old aluminum magazines uh, when they would fall on their feed lips 
they would they would bend slightly sometimes you wouldn't even see it uh, and it would cause feeding problems okay so once we got the PMAG and now Lancers and other magazines AR-15s became extremely reliable okay uh, so that kind of made a lot of people think hey AR-15 is enough so and also with AKs they became expensive harder to import the ammunition also became more expensive um, so I'm not saying throw out the AK-47 but uh, the you know as far as SHTF guns basically the 9 millimeter AR uh, took its place in the number three position uh, and uh, basically my 9 millimeter AR I wanted to take Glock magazines right Glock 17 magazines Glock 19 magazines um, and so number one it's got it takes the same magazines uh, number two I've got lots of 9 millimeter ammunition and there's lots of 9 millimeter ammunition out there so that makes it a really good number three gun to have okay and uh, it's also a good choice for hunting um, like dog size animals okay in an SHTF type of situation uh, you know dog size animals might be the best you can get for food okay uh, so you basically you're conserving your 556 five, ammunition you know you can use your nine millimeter ammunition okay so the nine millimeter AR was number three number four um, I had the uh, a 22 conversion bolt for your AR-15. Okay, so that knocked out the Ruger 1022, um, and the the reason was that hey, I mean if you can get you can shoot 22s and practice and small you know hunt uh, small uh, rodents with uh, uh, with uh, with 22 out of you know by by installing a 22 conversion bolt into your uh, AR-15. That's one less gun that you gotta buy, right? Because Ruger 1022s are no longer cheap. Okay, I mean there was a time when they were cheap. They're no longer cheap. Um, they are, you know, it, 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 they're they're very reliable with the 10 round rotary magazines. But once you start putting in the 25 round BX magazines, I have found that they become less reliable. Uh, so they're not that much more reliable. Uh, you know, with a 25 25 round magazine compared to you know your AR-15 with a 22 conversion bolt and a um, and a uh, uh, you know a 22 magazine in it. Okay, um, so yeah, so so the, the 22 conversion bolt was my number four choice for SHTF guns, and my number five choice okay, was an AK-47 shotgun. Okay, um, so at, at the time I said Lynx 12 because you can still buy them. At this point, I don't know if you can buy it, but basically an AK shotgun uh, that takes Sega. 12 magazines because these are there's a lot of them out there they're still selling them they're, they're fairly cheap um and at the time i had said it was the, the shotgun was there for primarily for hunting purposes um now it's there primarily for anti-drone defense okay um so yeah that's my shtf list and uh, i think that the the shotgun with buckshot especially would be very effective against the you know the the, 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 the common three hundred dollar drones that most people would would have, uh, but if you only got birdshot, that will probably do enough damage to the uh, uh, to you know to, to the to the drone that it wouldn't be able to continue flying. So even with birdshot, um, if that's all you got, it would it would probably work. You may have to shoot a little bit more at it, you know, uh, but it would probably work. Um, but yeah, those are, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys got any other ideas, please let me know. And we'll talk soon.